good, y'all? What's the numbers TV? It's your boy, Poe Row. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And like a video if you appreciate the content that Poe Row and What's the Numbers I provided. Send me back with a profile piece. This is an exclusive, a one on one. This story ain't even been on YouTube yet. So without no further ado, man, let's get right into it. This one is on Bully Gang, a crew out of Brooklyn, New York that hit the scene hard around 2015 when two of its main members, YB, real name Charles Williams, and Mo Money, real name Malik Harrell, will be arrested and charged with the killing of 28 year old Derek VD Quadobong from Brownsville, who was well known in Brooklyn. The murder, which took place at a BP gas station in Richmond Hill, Queens, will be the first of many news headlines that Bully Gang and its members will make over the next few years. Bully Gang originated in Brooklyn and spent a lot of time hanging out in Best Eye at the Reese Den Towers on Fulton Street near Marcus Garvey Boulevard. King Marley, J.O., Sticks, along with Mo Money and YB were some of the names of the members that stood out during this time. Already known in their neighborhood and throughout the streets of Brooklyn somewhat, Bully Gang really hit the scene when they jumped on Instagram flaunting their jewelry and fast lifestyle. Gang, man. Why did they chase us, man? We the young chasers, you hear me? We getting that change, though. That's what we do, though. Touch this black, so I'm get dropped. <laughs> the public started to pay attention to the Bully Gang almost immediately after they started becoming more visible on the gram. Almost simultaneously with that, certain fake pages and internet blog sites started to attempt to link the murder of VD with the new jewelry that certain members of Bully Gang were now wearing. A few weeks after their arrest, Mo Money and YB were both released on the murder charge after the police and prosecutors weren't able to gather enough evidence to present the case to a grand jury within the required time period. Trying to have your boy sitting up in here in jail and shit. Shit ain't for me, kid. Yeah. Not for me, kid. Did my time. Deserve <laughs> it. Yeah, bitch, bro. Look at my bro, though. Look at my, look how they got my, how they got my bro, though. But chill, though. Chill, though. Y'all thought niggas wasn't coming home, though. Chill, though. Why y'all mad, though? Chill, though. Chill, though. After YB and Mo beat the charge, the spotlight was shining even brighter on the bully gang, with all eyes watching to see what they would do next. Free to return back to the streets of Brooklyn, Mo and YB reconnected with the rest of the bully gang, who was now becoming one of the more well-known crews throughout the city. The attention that the crew was now getting seemed to happen almost overnight with the help of social media. YB would be the rap out the crew and already had a few videos out before Bully Gang started to gain some momentum. But he would start to drop a little more consistently now that people were watching. Talk About It featuring King Marley would drop in March of 2015 and be one of the first releases under the revamped Bully Gang umbrella. Now back making music, YB, Mo Money, and a few other Bully Gang members would take a trip down to Atlanta in May of 2015 for Mr. Rugg's all-white party, as they finally got to enjoy the success as a crew at an industry-studded event. YB, Mo Money, and the rest of the Bullies would be very active on the gram that week to say the least, as they took and posted numerous pics from the weekend's different events. But the good times wouldn't keep rolling for the Bullies, because once back home, King Marley, who was older than most of the other Bullies and was looked at as a big homie by most of the younger gang members, would end up losing his life. Marley, who had a close relationship with Mo Money and YB, was firmly planted in the Reese Dent Towers. That's why it caught a lot of people by surprise when he was shot and killed in the courtyard of the same Reese Dent Towers in May of 2015, just a week or two after the bullies returned from Atlanta. Tyke, another well-known person in Brooklyn who was affiliated with Fabulous and his street fan crew, would be found guilty of killing King Marley along with an accomplice and sentenced to 18 years while the accomplice got sentenced to 23 years. After King Marley was murdered, while BMO Money, who were fresh out of jail, would continue to push the bully gang name even further by showing off their lifestyle and close bond. People on social media enjoyed the two friends' close relationship because they cheated each other like brothers and it seemed like there wasn't nothing the two wouldn't do for each other. Once back in New York City, it was back to regular scheduled programming as they continued to chase the bag by any means necessary. Me? I like that. That's Poppy Peso. <laughs> That's Bobby Peso. Bobby Peso. That's Bobby Peso. Bobby, Bobby Peso. Yeah, that's bro. the new name, Poppy Peso. Bobby fucking Peso. But the drama surrounding the bullies was thick, having been in so many street related situations with different crews in the neighborhood and also other surrounding areas in Brooklyn. Throughout the whole bully game movement, J.O. would be in and out of jail with more time spent in and out. Other members like Timbo were there, still getting money, but some were just existing, as his personality didn't shine as bright as Mo and YB. Summer, start this shit off right. 
Pull up, nigga. We out here, nigga. It's nothing. Gang, gang, gang. Huh, gang. Say? Quit bro with me. <laughs> what, what up? What up? I got like bro. Y'all just forgot he's 730. Nah, he's 730. <laughs> nah, he's 730. Nah, he's 730. The eventful summer of 2015 would continue on with everybody in the West Next kind of move because so much was happening within the bully gang circle. The crew was making money hand over fist for sure as they showed themselves in and out of town hustling for days straight. Towards the end of June, more money would spend some of the cash they would make it at the jeweler when he bought two new bully gang pieces. Now both Mo Money and YB had customized bully gang chains and pieces to flaunt around town and on social media. From the outside looking in, Bully Gang was entertaining to watch, but you just couldn't help but feel like their reign on the top as one of the stronger crews in Brooklyn wouldn't last too much longer. As the summer went on, members came and went, but the two standouts of the crew, Mo and YB, were consistent with their hustle and kept getting to the bag. Then, YB would get locked up again around the end of June, beginning of July, and end up spending a couple months in jail before being released. Mind you, this is all happening in the same year, 2015. So now it's the middle of August when YB gets released from jail once again and is able to rejoin his bullies and return to the streets of Brooklyn. Almost immediately after walking out of the gates, YB and Mo will get back together and continue on their quest to secure the bag and rep Bully Gang to the fullest. Hey! 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 During that last month of summer in 2015, the duo would frequent their best star neighborhood, mainly the Reesley Den houses but also made some time to hit the club a few times all while recording the experience and uploading it to Instagram. In the beginning of September, YB and Mo Money, along with relatives, would celebrate an elder family member's birthday, which all the major bullies would attend. The crew would flick it up, and at least for one night, they were able to enjoy the fruits of their labor as they enjoyed the beautiful event. But little did they know that trouble was on the horizon, and this time, it would shake up the bully gang to its core. Around September 23rd, bully gang Mo Money would be arrested and charged once again with murder. Reports would say that allegedly Mo killed a man named Christopher Burgeon near St. John's Park in Prospect Heights, Brooklyn. The investigation of the murder, which took place earlier that month, would be quiet until they arrested Mo Money as he was leaving Queens Criminal Court where he was making an appearance on an unrelated charge. After Mo's arrest, YB now once again would be left alone on the streets to fend for itself without his best friend and partner in crime, which turned out to be a recipe for disaster. Because in the early morning hours of December 28, 2015, while people get into a shootout outside of Crystal's Hookah Lounge in Astoria, Queens. The initial story that would come out about the shooting was that YB was at Crystal's Hookah Lounge located on Steinway Street in Astoria, Queens. While there, he got into some sort of dispute with another patron which spilled outside, where they say the man reached to his white BMW, grabbed the gun, and opened fire on YB before fleeing the scene. YB was found with a gun on him also, with dying en route to the hospital. He was only 26 years old. With YB's death, we now have one of the main faces and founders of Bully Gang gone. Mo, who was incarcerated at the time, would take the death of his best friend hard and would go on to release numerous heartfelt posts on Instagram about his fallen comrade. Eventually, what happened on the night of YG's death would be given some clarity and broken down a bit when the New York Times released an article on the rare occurrence of justifiable homicides in New York City. The article would state that in the case of YB, detectives and prosecutors reviewed video showing the shooting in front of Crystal's hookah lounge and determined that the event had been instigated by YB. The video pretty convincingly shows that the victim kind of pursued the shooter, and clearly the victim fired first. Detectives said, adding that the prosecutors believe they did not have a good case to charge the killer with the shooting, ruling it as a justifiable homicide, and only charged him with illegal gun possession for the gun he had used to defend himself. After Mo's arrest and the death of YB, Bully Gang, J.O. and Timber will link up with a few other affiliates to head to Miami in early October to enjoy themselves and put on for their fallen and locked up bullies. He in his out here. He in that Rory acting up. No fucking manners. Bully Gang is still right. No fucking manners. The weekend will be action packed with foreign cars, bottle popping club nights, and lots of women. After the trip, J.O. will head back out of town to chase the bag where he would end up getting locked up and sentenced to some years in jail which is where he currently is although he should be coming home soon now Timbo eventually over time he would kind of separate himself from the rest of the bullies and start playing the background a bit although still some did affiliate with him so now it's winter of 2015 and the bullies have had a rough second half of the year they lost King Marley and YB to gun violence and more money in jail to the jail system it was looking like bully game was over as the ones that were still free were more comfortable playing the background, doing their thing away from the spotlight. But it wouldn't stay that way for long because in December of 2015, a new face would emerge to carry the Bully Gang in 2016 and his name was Bully Gang Sticks. 
Sticks, who was a day one bully gang member, got locked up around 2007 and had just recently been released from prison. His release couldn't have came at a better time for the bully gang as a respected original member was home to hopefully get the bully gang shit back on course. Sticks, who liked YB was also a rapper, would get right to work on making a name for herself in the music industry. Heavy promo on social media, doing showcases, interviews, and even taking over Mo Money's social media account to promo his music was some of the things Stick got going as soon as he came from jail. He will reintroduce another young bully who used to be around Mo Money a bit by the name of BG Fib Giuliano as the two linked up a few times. Stix in his short time being home was doing everything in his power to keep the bully gang name afloat. In March of 2016, Stix would celebrate his first birthday as a free man in nine years. Although it was a bittersweet feeling for him because none of his day one bullies were around to turn up with him, he still did it up and made a promise to live every day like it was his last. After his B-Day festivities, Stix would continue on his music grind where he was actually starting to make some progress. He would lock in a couple of shows and radio appearances along with dropping a few music videos in his short time home as he attempted to build up his buzz in the rap game. All his hard work was finally paying off a bit when Sticks dropped his EP titled Beneficial in August of 2016. Sticks was definitely chasing his dream. He would make an appearance on DTF Radio where he went to promote his new single, Bag Chaser. Things were looking up for Sticks in the bully game and he was getting things back to normal bringing a bit of restructuring to the group after the loss of several key members to death in jail. The bullies were excited to see what was next, but once again, it was tragedy that would come knocking. When in early September, just a few days after his DTF radio interview, Bully Gang Sticks was shot and killed. Once again, Bully Gang was dealing with a major loss of one of his key members being shot and killed. So now within about an 18 month span, the bullies lost King Marley, YB, and now Sticks to gun violence. While more money in jail remained in jail. It will be months of silence concerning the bullies. With no new information being released. Until sometime in early 2017, when people would start hearing rumblings of more money possibly coming home from out under that murder charge, like he did the first time. But before any good news could come, tragedy would strike again. In March of 2017, Bully Gang member Fifth Giuliano would be shot and killed where he frequently hung out inside the Reesey Den Towers. Reports said that he was shot through the front of the head in a stairwell inside the troubled buildings. He died at the scene. Bully Gang Fifth Giuliano was only 19 years old at the time of his death. He must have been going through something in the hood because before he was killed, he was dissing someone on his Instagram, although he never directly said who he was talking about. After another Buddy Gang member's death, officially, it looked over for the crew, as there was nobody home in the streets that wanted to take control and put the gang on his back. But that would all change when in May of 2017, the only member who could get the Bully Gang back to the level they were before, the deaths of Marley and YB, would be released from prison. Yep, that's right. Mo Money was now home from jail after beating yet another murder charge and allegedly winning a nice six-figure settlement in the process. Founding member Bully Gang Mo will be released from prison once again after beating another murder charge. He was now free to return to the streets of Brooklyn and reunite with his family and the remaining bullies that were home at the time. Will Mo Money be able to return the Bully Gang back to his 2015 form where they was getting a bunch of money before all the drama happened or will the streets get the best of the number one bully? So after being released from prison in May of 2017, Mo Money would be eager to reunite with his family and friends. Mo who was sitting in jail since September 2015 had missed a lot as so much had occurred during his time away. Bully gang members YB, Styx, and Fifth Giuliano were all killed during that time period along with J.O. getting locked up and sent us to a nice little stretch in the out of state prison. But Mo was trying to smile through it all as he once again was a free man and ready to turn the bully gang name back up on IG and in the streets of Brooklyn. But before he could even start the process of rebuilding his life and crew, another tough blow would come Mo's way when his father would pass away from health reasons almost simultaneously with Mo being released from jail. It was yet another tough blow that Mo would have to deal with, once again losing someone close to him to death. The next few months were filled with RIP posts on Instagram to his pops, YB and Sticks. It took a little while for Mo to get back in his bag. But by the end of July, it looked like he was starting to find his way a bit as he started moving around the city a bit, connecting with old and new friends. Besides from Mo, who was back on IG popping his shit, the old days of bully gang members being all on social media, flying their money and jewelry were a thing of the past. As the younger bullies, along with the older ones that were still around, chose to keep a lower profile than the ones before them. Heading into the end of 2017, Mo was really starting to get to the money again. He would also now be in a relationship with a woman who would end up becoming the mother of his child. He would ride this new energy he had 
into the new year as 2018 started off looking better than the previous two years, which was spent in and out of jail. Back with a designer outfits and expensive jewelry, along with a ride or die female to share it with. Hey, yo, the other day somebody asked me like, yo, like, like, yo, why, why you, why you post your money? Why you post your money? You know, like, you know people hate you and they gonna get jealous. And I was like, like I post my money because that's what the fuck I be wanting to do though, like. And because like, niggas thought I was never getting out the can though. They thought it was over though. So when they see me and they see me and I'm like, and I'm getting all this bread though, like, 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 I want to show it off though. I want y'all niggas to hate me more though. And for the niggas that fuck with me, I want to motivate you. Other than that, though, you know, do what I do. You know what I mean? I do what you niggas don't do. You niggas do that, I do this. You know what I mean? Y'all go that way, I'm going this way. You know? Fuck is you talk about, bum ass nigga? A baby shower would take place in March of 2018, welcoming the bundle of joy that was on its way. Mo's life seemed to be looking up and headed in the right direction. And after months of grinding, a well-needed trip to Atlanta to party a bit was taken. Although Mo didn't have his everyday partner YB to run around the streets with anymore, he did start to forge a close bond with Taj Wiley, better known as Young252 on Instagram. The two would keep the party rolling and head straight to South Beach, Miami to turn up some more. On May 26, 2018, which marked the one-year anniversary that Mo had been home, he would make a post to Instagram putting light on some of the difficult situations that he'd been through and how he's built for it and still shining through it all. For the next few months, Mo continued to get money as he prepared for the birth of his first child, who in July of 2018 was delivered to the world. Mo was building his family and now had a beautiful girl and daughter at home waiting for him to return every night. Mo was rolling and doing good in life, staying out of jail and providing for his family. He was iced out crazy too as he had added to his jewelry game since he'd been home. Done were the days that bully gang as a whole was being talked about consistently on social media. These days, you didn't hear too much chatter about what the bullies were going to do next. Instead, the talk was all about Mo, who was back looking like money. Although you could catch Mo in the crowd, he was known to move around mostly solo or with one other person. But whenever it was time to pop out to the club, you could catch Mo off now with his girl, with Taj Wiley, a.k.a. Young 252. The two would hit Miami and Atlanta to party some more, as those are two of the most frequent areas in the United States to go and have a good time. Of course... Most of the trips and parties were documented on their social media pages. The next big event in Mo's life was his birthday in November of 2018. He would have a dinner, then hit the club to celebrate him being a free man, getting money, and taking care of his family. Although it wasn't so much about the bully gang anymore, as Mo was on a more grown man type of timing, it's safe to say when you seen Mo, you seen the bully gang, even if he was by himself, which is the reason why they called him the number one bully. The holidays would come and go with no hiccups, as Mo was able to enjoy his daughter's first Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's together. He would lose his IG page for a month or so in December of 2018. He would eventually get his IG back, make another post or two, then he would disappear from the gram once again. From there, the rumors would start almost instantly that Mo was locked up, being as he loved IG so much people just assume anytime he's absent from Instagram, for an extended period of time that he's in jail. It took a while for the truth to come out, but those guessing were right, as Mo was indeed locked back up. No one knew the exact charges he was facing this time, but there was whispers that Mo was locked up for yet another murder. So now it's the beginning of 2019, and Mo finds himself back behind bars facing another murder charge. Things were looking bleak, but it's a road he's been down before. The news behind Mo Money and the Bully Gang will calm down for a bit, as there wasn't anything new to report besides Mo being locked up. But that would change in June of 2020, when Mo along with 10 others were indicted for an elaborate interstate narcotics operation that included smuggling drug-soaked comic books and court papers into Rikers Island. The 11 defendants charged in two indictments include a pair of DOE staffers who were alleged associates of the gang. Members of the drug ring, which spanned four states, allegedly trafficked crack, heroin, and other controlled substances using cars with hidden compartments and trap houses in Maine to store narcotics, according to court papers. Now, all of these new charges that Mo and his co-defendants are setting up for are all alleged as they're fresh charges and playing themselves out in court as we speak. So we're not going to dive too deep into them as they're still pending. 
But we must report that in February 2021, a third superseding indictment against 10 more members and associates of the bully gang will be unsealed in the Brooklyn Federal Court. The charges range from attempted murder, armed robbery, narcotics trafficking, bribery, extortion, and money laundering, according to the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Eastern District. Mo's baby mother will be included in that indictment for her alleged role in the drug operation. So right now, Mo Money is still locked up, waiting for his day in court. Remember that all crimes are alleged at this point, and he's came out a free man after beating similar charges before. So don't count him or the rest of the bullies out just yet. But yo, it's What's the Numbers TV. That was part two with the bully gang, you know what I'm saying? So the story is complete for now. I will do a follow piece, follow up piece after as all the charges are alleged at this point. So when the outcome of all these court proceedings play out, I will do a follow-up, man. Now, Taj Wiley, who I mentioned in this video, he also caught in a federal federal indictment out of Connecticut, you know what I'm saying, June of 2021. I didn't include that in the bully gang story because he wasn't really in the bully gang when they first came out. So I mentioned that after being that I mentioned the story. Y'all can see the indictment right there. I mean, the press release for the indictment. So, you know, I'll probably mention that in the follow-up piece too, what comes with, with Taj Wiley's case, aka Young252 on Instagram. Now, like I said, man, I was the only one with it on YouTube, besides the newspapers and different, you know, mag, um, different um, blogs and newspaper articles from different states talking about the bully gang. The story wasn't really out on YouTube, so here y'all go. What's the numbers TV? You know, we're the only one with it. You know, we do different things in a lot of these channels out here. We focus on a lot of people that people don't remember or forgot about or may not even be in tune enough in the streets to know what's going on out here. So that's what we do at What's the Numbers TV. Now, rest in peace to everybody that was mentioned in this video that lost their life. You know what I'm saying? Because it was victims. It was, you know, people that was getting locked up for certain things. And even though we don't know the full story, only what they get, what they tell us, rest in peace to everybody that was mentioned in this video that lost their life. You understand what I'm saying? And I don't want to ramble too long in this video. It's already a long video, man. But it's Poe Rose, What's the Numbers TV. Be back before you know it, man. We out of here. Peace.